hello everyone. My name is Chanel and I'm an undergraduate student studying computer science at Rochester Institute of Technology. So this past semester, I did research on cross-organizational continual learning of cyber threat models. And today I'll be talking about the research and how it can be used to build intelligent models that are able to detect cyber attacks from uh, across different organizations. So cyber threats uh, continue to occur to many different organizations across many different networks. And not only do they breach security, um, damage data, and disrupt networks, uh, but they also increase in types and change in patterns over the years. Um, because of this, it makes it especially difficult to detect them correctly yeah, using traditional methods. And the counter to this is hopefully to build smarter intrusion detection systems that can learn from these changes um, and detect the attacks. Um, in my case, I am working on building a data-driven machine learning model that can continuously learn from a stream of data. <clears throat> and then uh, the idea is that if learn, uh, learning from the stream of data, the model can adapt to new cyber threat scenarios over its lifetime and uh, detect cross-organizational attacks from uh, different types of uh, networks. Um, and throughout this presentation, I'll be going over three things. So the data stream, the continual learning process, um, and then the prediction output of the model. So like which attack is being seen. Um, and some things to consider are how to interpret these model predictions and how they can mitigate cyber, cyber security risks. Uh, so starting with the data stream, um, we need to create a setting where the model can learn from changing distributions and data. So to do this, the data sets from each organization, such as organization one, two, and three, can be combined into a single stream. Um, the first part is involving data homogenization and pre-processing. So basically what this is doing is to ensure that features and labels across different organizations and sources are consistent. Um, and then the table on the right shows how port services are uh, mapped to port numbers from various different organizations based on which ones are being used. And then um, we also need to consider invalid data. So wrong types, invalid numbers, they are removed and left out of the data stream. And finally, class weighting and resampling, um, which is to account for a class imbalance with minority cyber attack types. Uh, this ensures that the model can, uh, that the classes that are not encountered very often have an equal chance of being learned by the model. Um, and then the next part is creating a setting in which each of these classes arrives in a continuous stream. Um, and then the figure on the bottom here shows the setting where at any point in time, there's uh, at most two classes of traffic. So, but the first one benign is regular traffic not considered an attack. And then the second is any other attack type that might be occurring in real time. And then, so the motivation behind this is to mimic a real world scenario where networks encounters different attack types uh, alongside benign traffic that might be happening at the same time. And the model needs to be able to effectively differentiate between these, uh, regardless of what organization it's currently seen. Um, and then the next thing, uh, or the, the, the next thing that needs to be done is to build the actual model. Um, my idea was to use a continual learning strategy known as experience replay, which centers around a replay buffer. So this replay buffer helps the model learn new data over time without forgetting. And basically it will save data samples from the stream to, um, to the buffer if, it, if the model is not confident about that particular sample's traffic type. Um, if it's confident enough, it will not be saved. So nothing gets saved here. And some important things to know is that um, the buffer is fixed in size to prevent memory from growing unnecessarily large. Um, and it will randomly replace, excuse me, it will randomly replace old samples with new samples once it is full. And then, 
samples saved to the buffer, they need to get a label from experts to allow the model to learn from. And then these label samples will then update the model, which will be predicting traffic types in real time. And here are some results that I obtained so far, highlighting the importance of continuum learning for this. So this figure here at the bottom shows what happens when you do regular, I guess, a regular detection methods using machine learning. So no continual learning. Um, it trains on an old set of data from one organization and predicts it on a new set of data from another organization. And as you can see, it does quite poorly and has trouble differentiating between <clears throat> different types of traffic. With, with each of these squares representing a score of how well it's doing. And in comparison, the continued learning model shown on the right-hand side continuously adapts to different attack types over time and eventually converges towards uh, very good accuracy in terms of predictions. <clears throat> in addition to this, um, thank you. And then in addition to this, this uh, great, this method of continual learning greatly reduces the amount of labeled data needed. So because of the fact that we're only labeling the data that is saved to the buffer and it only learns from the buffer data. So we do not need as large of a data set and does not take as much memory. So based on the research done, um, continual learning could potentially allow for a more flexible cyber threat modeling. So adaptation to a constantly changing environment, which is more reflective of the real world we live in, and also task or organization agnostic learning. So regardless of which organization the attack is or originating from should be able to detect it. And finally, it only uses about 10% of the total data. And all of this combined can help cybersecurity analysts correctly respond to attacks and mitigate the risks that come with these cyber threats. Um, some improvements in the future work is that this model can be tested against more data sets and more attack types. And uh, so, for, for example, does this approach work across a different set of organizations? Uh, currently, I've only tested for a few organizations, but this work could be extended to test for other cases. And also, the current model only accounts for denial of service attacks, which is a very, very specific type of cyber attack. Um, could it be extended to more different attack types? And then the continual learning model also could be further refined. So some possible directions are improving feature embedding in the initial model, which is how well the model is created initially. And then also some generative models for sample generation and also smarter drift detection for detecting when data suddenly changes. Um, and this concludes my presentation and special thanks to Dr. Jay Yang for supporting me throughout this research. Um, and thank you to everyone here for the opportunity to present.